I'm covering the title. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing Metropolitan Cookbook. This book was published in 1957 and you may remember it from one of my recent cookbook hauls. My good friend Lindsay got this for me for Christmas. A little bit of background on this cookbook. It came to us from the Metropolitan Life Insurance Agency, otherwise known as MetLife, and they put out several of these cookbooks through the years. I actually have a couple of other ones. So this one is from 1964 and you'll notice some similarity in the cover. I also have this one. It doesn't have a date on it, but it looks like it's from an earlier era. It doesn't have, you know, fun, fun illustrations inside or anything. It's just words. Whereas this one is a real gem. These books were intended to help policyholders and their families prepare healthful meals. These cookbooks were produced from about 1918 on. I'm not sure exactly when the last one came out. If you know or you have a copy, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to start with the cover on this one because I love it so much. So we have this beautiful blue background. I really enjoy this shade of blue. But even better, we have these very happy foods. So they have little joyous expressions on their faces. These muffins, come on. <laughs> They're just jumping out of the pan. They're so excited. A carrot and a tomato doing a dance. These happy food illustrations are a continuing theme throughout the book. Gotta check out this inside cover. I'm pretty sure I shared this in my cookbook haul, but for those of you who didn't watch, look at this. This is magic. A great big happy bowl of soup and some happy turnips, carrots. This one is very small, but it immediately caught my eye. This little bean for the chili con carne recipe. I mean, how cute is he? <laughs> it looks like he's doing the wave. This is the only actual illustration of a person I could find. This pie purveyor. So it looks like we have a lemon sitting on the stool and they're throwing a pie in the face of a larger pie with human features. <laughs> there are a few unhappy faces in these illustrations. This big fish looks very concerned, rightfully so, because this is the fish chapter. So I think we know, I think we know this fish's fate. <laughs> this cake does not look too enthusiastic about what I'm assuming are tiny cupcakes. The back cover features this really cool, just like knife, fork, spoon illustration. I would just love to have this as a framed poster. It's on this edition as well, but more in keeping with like the color theme of each one. Focusing a lot on the illustrations in this because they're just, they're awesome. This is what I miss from more modern cookbooks. So a lot of these recipes are pretty classic, pretty standard recipes of the day. A nice variety for families, pretty easy to prepare recipes from the looks of it as well. This is much appreciated in the beverage section. We have a coffee making chart. So how much coffee versus how much water per whatever ounce serving. The servings of coffee back in this time were a little bit smaller than what we would consider a serving now. It says the average coffee serving is five and a half ounces. <laughs> This was my average coffee serving today from Starbucks, so it's a little bit more than five and a half ounces. <laughs> As for the recipe I am preparing today, we're going for a dessert. Today I'm going to be preparing Apple Brown Betty. I've never made an Apple Brown Betty. I've made Apple Crumble, I've made Apple Crisp, I've made Apple Cakes, never a Brown Betty. I've heard a lot about this recipe. It seems like it's been around for quite some time. It looks kind of similar to like your traditional Apple Crumble, except you use breadcrumbs. There's only half a cup of um, sugar in this. It says sugar or other sweetening. So I suppose you could use things like honey, whatever else you wanted. Or maybe this was a, a point in time when artificial sweeteners were starting to become available. Possibly. I love an apple dessert, so let's get started. I'm gonna be cutting this recipe in half, but if you wanna follow along, all of the ingredients and instructions will be listed in full in the description down below. So it says set oven for moderate 375. I'm doing that right now. Mix breadcrumbs, butter, or margarine, peel, sugar, and cinnamon. So we have our soft breadcrumbs. I just zapped some bread in my food processor, pulsed it a few times, and I got some soft breadcrumbs. We got butter. We got our butter and our crumbs and they're going in this bowl. We have our orange zest or lemon zest. I went with lemon, sugar, and our cinnamon. Love some cinnamon. All right, set that aside. Moving on, got my apples. I'm going with Granny Smith for this recipe because it is what I like to bake with. They're nice and tart and they're readily available. We can get fancier with our apples in the fall, but right now this is what I've got. Oh, 
place half the sliced apples in a buttered baking dish. So I better be slicing these apples. Got my little buttered butterfly gold baking dish. <laughs> Got a little peel that I left on here, but I don't think that'll be a problem. Seems like a rather rustic dessert. Yeah, that's about half. Cover with half of the breadcrumb mixture. So we've got my breadcrumb, butter, et cetera mixture right here. We're gonna do half. Add remaining apple slices and cover with remaining crumb mixture. Arrange these a little bit more. Move those around just a little. And we've got our remaining crumb mixture going on. Distribute that a little bit more evenly. Sprinkle with fruit juice. So I've got some apple juice here. That prep went very quickly. So here we have our prepped apple brown Betty. And I'm gonna put this in the oven and bake it at 375 for 45 minutes. Here she is. Here's Betty, apple brown Betty. That's a terrible joke. Anyway, this made my house smell really amazing while it was cooking. So I have high hopes for this one. Looks a little liquidy. The book does say that you can eat this hot or cold. I suspect that if you let it cool completely more than just the couple minutes that I let it cool, it's gonna thicken up quite a bit. But I can't wait, so let's give this a taste. All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit in a dish. It says you can serve this with cream, hard sauce, vanilla ice cream. I'll probably serve this later with some vanilla ice cream, but I wanna try it as is first. Get a little of the topping. Mm. The crumbs make a really nice crispy topping. I can really, really taste that lemon zest in there. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think I might actually take that flavor back just a little bit. I might consider taking the liquid down a notch as well because these apples do give off quite a bit of their own juice. But yeah, I mean, apples are nice and soft. And this is a really good, really easy apple dessert. Okay, I'm gonna finish this bowl. I cooked a recipe from Metropolitan Cookbook. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I wanted to take a quick second to remind everybody about my fondue open collaboration that's coming up. If you'd like to participate, film yourself making fondue, upload your video and post it on Thursday, February 10th with the hashtag, let's fondue this. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I post content like this just about every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. 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 B